Testing one, two, check the microphone. Don't want to lose this. I will not lose this. Yay! Okay. Mm -hmm. Mabu, hi, and welcome. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tez Milan. We are driving into New Orleans today. I, I'm not even looking at myself. We are driving. Mabu, hi, hi, hi. Yeah. We are driving into New Orleans today. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana, to visit the first settlement of Filipinos in all of the United States. Yay! So now we are on our way. I am on the Gulf Coast. I decided to drive my butt from New York City because while I was interviewing Dr. Michael Salgarolo, he started talking about the first Filipino settlement in a place called St. Malo in Louisiana. What we have left of St. Malo are fragments in the historical archive. What I hope to do is to use those archival fragments to rebuild and reimagine the world of these Filipino sailors. I do history with the hope that we can capture some of the brilliance of our ancestors and bring it with us into the 21st century. Unfortunately, this place no longer exists because it was destroyed during a hurricane in the late 1800s. Now there are several markers. And then on top of that, we're gonna go visit the Filipino Spanish Bele Bene Benevolent Society tomb that is at the St. Vincent de Paul Cemetery. I guess there's like three of these things and so I have to try to find it. Yeah, we're gonna go check this place out. We're kind of on a schedule here. So we are on our way to New Orleans. This is it! <laughs> so pretty. St. Malo is known as the first recorded permanent Filipino settlement in the U.S. It was located in the bayous of Louisiana along the shore of Lake Bourne in St. Bernard Parish. You can't reach the area today unless you go by private boat. St. Malo is also considered the first Asian American settlement in the United States. The exact year of settlement is still disputed. Some say St. Malo was founded as early as 1763. Others say it was in the early 19th century. Darn it, it's closed today, because it's Monday. Ugh. Now that I came here to do what I had to do, St. Malo marker, check. Now we're off to see the Manila Village marker in Jean Lafitte. Let's go. Well, it's not 100% sure how or when the Filipinos settled in St. Malo. Many of the Filipinos who made the marshes their home were sailors who had worked on the Spanish Manila galleon ships. All right, now we are going to the Manila Village marker. Let's go to Jean Lafitte, who may or may not have been involved with the Filipinos. <laughs> it's 19 miles away, and it's going to take me an hour if I walk, which I'm not. Whoa. No, this says an hour by driving? No. I guess it's gonna take me an hour to get there. <laughs> Who knew? They were recorded to live there in wooden houses perched on stilts above the water, similar to those found in the Philippines. Um, so <laughs> I just went into the gas station over there because I needed exact change to get on this ferry, I guess. It's gonna take me to the other side of, I don't know, somewhere. And I was like, do you have change for 20? Cause I like had no ca I have, like no cash on me except for the 20 that I just took out of an ATM machine. And the woman was really nice about it. And I was like, okay, so how does this work? Do I, is it like an actual ferry, like a boat? She's like, yeah, it's a boat. You, you get, you get in your car, you drive your car, onto the ferry, it's an actual boat, give them a dollar and that's it. And she's like, I can tell you that you're not from around here. Yeah, it's it's a thing, I guess. Ferries are a thing here for, to get from one side of the city to the other. The allure was the abundance of seafood and that it was also perhaps quite difficult for the Spanish, or anyone for that matter, to reach them. like a big deal for a lot of people that like do this all the time but like this is pretty rad <laughs> So 
So this is the town of Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte, or the Lafitte, not Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Here's an interesting story about Jean Lafitte and the Filipinos that may or may not be true. As the story goes, in the early 19th century, Filipinos of St. Malo were recruited by Jean Lafitte, a pirate who was known to lead a literal band of misfits, pirates, privateers, and smugglers known as Paratarillans. This privately recruited fleet of soldiers would go on to help U.S. Major General Andrew Jackson in the Battle of New Orleans at the end of the War of 1812. Thanks to their help, the U.S. won the battle and Jean Lafitte was pardoned. All right, they're not letting me park, so I'm just going to park on the side and do my thing. According to Dr. Sagarello, this story is merely the stuff of legends. It was only after 100 years that the Filipinos actually claimed to have fought in the battle with Jean Lafitte. No actual record of them being recruited exists. This early group of this early group of Filipino sailors would later this early group of Filipino sailors would later establish Manila Village and Clark Chenier, also known as Clarksville. The Filipino settlers of these early communities were called Manila men, or Tagalas. They caught and dried shrimp that were exported to Asia, Canada, South, and Central Americas. In addition to their native Philippine tongue of Tagalog and Visaya, they spoke Spanish. The first article ever published about Filipinos was written in 1883. Two journalists, Lafcadio Hearn and Charles Whitney, ventured out to St. Malo and took accounts of what they experienced and saw. Let's go to New Orleans. The guys at St. Malo, they founded the first Filipino organization in the United States. In 1870, they created something called the Hispano-Filipino Benevolent Society of New Orleans. That organization was founded in 1870, which is about 20 years before Jose Rizal starts publishing his books, before the Ilustrados, you know, all the intellectuals in Europe are developing this idea of a Filipino identity. Before that, you have these guys who are living out in a swamp in Louisiana from different parts of the islands who are organizing themselves and calling themselves Filipinos. One of the things that that group did was they had a group tomb. When people would be buried, they would have this tomb where they could bury people. That tomb is still standing at a cemetery in New Orleans, St. Vincent de Paul Cemetery. It's in pretty bad shape. Got hit pretty bad during Katrina. There's some folks working to try to restore it, but you can see it and they've got the name up there. All right, I'm having just a little bit of a problem finding it because there's three of these cemeteries all close to each other. And this one I believe is number one. The one across the street is number two, and I don't know where number three is. So, we're looking. <laughs> we're going to continue to look for this. <gasps> All right, I think I found it. Number three. Okay, that wasn't it. Going back to one, because I have a feeling it's in there. I love cemeteries. I love visiting cemeteries. There's like something very special about them. And what's really cool too is that today is Halloween. Technically I should be here on All Saints Day or All Souls Day, but I'm here on Hallow's Eve visiting the Filipino ancestors. Okay, we found it. It is in the southwest corner of Cemetery 2. Number two, number two, which is on the other side of number one. Just what I'm walking through right now, FYI. St. Malo was eventually destroyed by the Chenier Caminata hurricane of 1893. The Filipino community that lived there was dispersed, never to return again. St. Malo is named after Juan St. Malo, and I'll let Dr. Michael Sagarello tell you more about him. St. Malo, Louisiana is where the Filipinos settled. That name comes from a guy named Juan San Malo, who's the leader of a group of African Maroons. These were self-liberated, self-emancipated people who were formerly enslaved, who went out to those same bayous and lived out there and escaped from slavery. And I thought, okay, there's gonna be something interesting here about race. There's gonna be something really rich to work through that history. Juan St. Malo was eventually captured and executed in front of St. Louis Cathedral in Jackson Square. And that is all that remains of the first Filipino settlements here in the United States. Some markers and our stories. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Woo! New Orleans. <laughs>